Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to start talking about combined loads. Combined loads basically occur in normal um, situations where you have a state of stress that is neither purely uh, normal stress or pu nor purely uh, shearing stress. But basically you have some state of stress that's a combination of both normal and shear. Now this is very common in real life because loads don't necessarily apply on the axis or on the cross section and cross sections are not, near, not necessarily parallel or perpendicular to the loads applied. So it is a more common or general state of stress to have both a shearing stress and a normal stress. So because that is true, um, we have a situation where if you have a normal stress and a shearing stress and you don't know, you know that both of them can vary not only along the axis of a structural member but along as you rotate through different angles like when we had those um, glued splices and we had shearing stress and normal stress uh, varied as we tilted that particular surface where the maximums occur and where the minimums occur, we still have to design for where loads, where shearing stress and where normal stress are maximum. We have to make sure that every, every spot um, on every cross section, everywhere on the structural member is capable of bearing the normal and shearing stress. So the question that we really have is, if we have a surface, I'm gonna go ahead and come over here to the camera for just a second. If we have a surface that has on it a, say we have an applied load P and maybe we have another applied load V and we have a surface here and if that surface, we're not physically rotating it really, but we're saying the sigma and tau on every surface might be different. Where is tau a maximum? And where is sigma a maximum? And the reason that we want to answer those questions is those are the stresses that we want to design for. So one way that we can do it that we've been sort of working with up to this point is sort of arbitrarily looking for points. Like we take a cross section and we say, oh, the maximum stress, the maximum shearing stress is going to occur either on the neutral axis or it's going to occur if the flange is very, very small, it could occur at the intersection of the flange and the web. So Otto Moore developed this idea that is really amazing, especially for a simple-minded engineer uh, to, to, and I say that because I'm an engineer, um, but to think, say, what if we looked at it as a circle? Since we're rotating um, this plane through at least half of a circle to come back to its original position, what if we considered the state of stress as being the state of, state of stress on a circle? So he went through this derivation, and he basically said, all right, well, the sigma at any point is going to be equal to um, this particular function of the angle that we turn through and tau is going to be equal to a function of this angle that we turn to. And if we look at this and then we square it, we realize that we have the equation of a circle. And basically all of the angles are based on two theta. In other words, two times the degree that we turn through as we rotate the plane through 180 degrees. And then he said, okay, well that makes sense because Symmetry is, symmetry is achieved when we rotate through 180 degrees, but a circle has 360 degrees. 360 divided by 180 is 2, so here we have the 2 theta over and over again. So he said instead of putting it through 2 theta every single time and going through something that looks like this, what if we just drew a circle? And we said every 2 degrees on the circle is equal to 1 degree on the structural member and he came out with this relatively simple equation based on the theta of the circle. So this is called Moore's circle. And Moore's circle is a, an amazing analysis tool for finding both the 
um, sigma and the tau, or the um, normal stress and the shearing stress on a surface as we rotate through. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. This is actually talking about a little something. I do this in reverse order. We first start talking about combined loads in general, and then later on we start talking about more circles. So I'm going to start in the handout that I've given you about halfway through. Do you just want us to read through all this? Yes, and we're going to do the first part after we finish more circle. Okay. So the, the technique that we use in order to use uh, more circle for analysis is called a stress block. And this is a drawing of a stress block. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to point out to you. First of all, you'll notice that we have sigma y, sigma x, because those are axial functions. And then we have tau xy, because tau is a surface feature, not an axial feature. In the same way that when we were talking about chapter 6, tau is exerted over the entire surface, so that you can have a shearing stress that appears, well, you could say it's on a surface that is vertical or horizontal. That's because it's not really, it's over the whole plane. So you have to take um, the geometry, the Q and the I, in one direction, depending on the direction of the tau, in the direction of the, not tau, but of the V, but that the surface that it occurs on can be either vertical or horizontal, or it could be at some other angle. And that's what we're expanding to. What if it's not vertical or horizontal? What if it's at some other angle? And what if that's really where the greatest stress occurs? We still want to know what the, great, the greatest stress is. So we have um, sigma y, and we have sigma x, but then we just have tau xy. Now, if you look at sigma y, it has to be opposed. In other words, you have to have equal and opposite sigma y values, and same with sigma x, because otherwise it's going to move, which is not happening. We're talking about something sitting still, being subjected to a state of stress. Tau xy, there are not two arrows because it's a plane or function. There are four arrows. We have a tau xy, you see here is pointing up, here is pointing down. Well, if those were forces, or if they were axial phenomena, that would oppose, but it only opposes in the sense that the forces are equal to zero. If you, have a, if you had an arrow here and an arrow here, that stress block would actually spin, wouldn't it? So you have to oppose it, uh, just mathematically, in order for it to stay structurally, um, statically um, fixed, you have to have four arrows because these two arrows would spin it in a counterclockwise direction, these two arrows would spin it in a clockwise direction, and so the four arrows um, make it stay still. And so you only have two arrows for y, two arrows for x, but then you have four arrows for the entire plane. This is referred to as a biaxial state of stress, just meaning that it's occurring on two axes. In this case, we're talking about the x and the y axes and the xy plane. Okay. So, the practical application of more circle is if we take this stress block, which is just a wee tiny little finite element from our um, structural member, and we rotate it through this angle theta, this is not a complete derivation. But we can say that sigma at some angle is equal to this, and tau at some angle is equal to this, and this can be determined just using um, the, the derivation that I just showed you for more circle. But basically, we come up with this sort of an equation where we can say that sigma at some angle minus this average value squared plus tau at that same angle squared is equal to this. Well, if you look at this equation, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That is the equation of a circle. So what that tells us is that this x, sigma x plus sigma y over 2 is actually the center of a circle. Um, and this term, um, sigma x minus sigma y over 2 quantity squared plus tau xy squared is actually the radius of a circle. So the analysis technique is to determine the value of sigma x, the value of sigma y, and the value of tau xy, and then draw a circle with these parameters, and then recognize that 2 degrees on the circle is the same as 1 degree on the structural member which is really kind of brilliant. Because if you had to organize all this information without drawing a circle, you would be writing table after table after table after table of information. 
So uh, this is kind of like I said, this is why Otto Moore becomes, you know, your best friend in this case. All right. The other thing is, is that I want you to notice when you draw more circle, which is what we will be doing on this technique, I will teach you how to do it, but um, basically what we have previously thought of as the y-axis is no longer y, it's tau. And what we've previously thought of as being the x-axis is no longer x, it's sigma. In other words, the x and y-axis are going to be at some other orientation on this circle, um, but sigma is on this axis and tau is on this axis. Now, why are they 90 degrees apart? Well, if you recall from our previous discussion in chapter two, where sigma was equal to zero, tau was equal to a maximum value. Um, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Where sigma was equal to a maximum value, 45 degrees off of that, tau was equal to a maximum value. That was just by those equations for sigma and tau based on that rotating um, glued or spliced surface. And 45 degrees in real life is 90 degrees on the angle, is on, is on the structural member. 45 degrees in real life is 90 degrees on the circle. So if you look at the 90 degree relationship between sigma max and tau max, that relates to that 45 degree uh, relationship on the structural member. So it all works out, doesn't it? But it is very difficult for students to make the mental switch that we're not talking about X and Y, that X and Y are actually at some other angle on this circle, that we're talking about sigma and tau on these two axes. Okay? So what do we do with that? What does that all mean? <laughs> okay, so here's sort of the, the here's sort of the guts of what we're going to be talking about. Um, like I said, the circle represents 360, stress block is 80. That means that one degree of rotation on the stress block equals two on the circle. Every point on this circle represents the state, state of stress. In other words, some sigma and some tau on the stress block. And where they're maximum, um, that's what we need to design for. And we can also find the orientations as we rotate through those particular, um, those particular uh, splices, I guess you would say the splice surfaces. Now, because we know where the center is and we know what the radius is, that's all we need to draw a circle, isn't it? We can put the center and draw a radius, we know what it is. Now, tau max, like I said before, tau has that sort of directional feature in terms of whether it's negative or positive. But sigma is either in tension or compression. Tau is always going to be zero where sigma is equal to a max. So Moore's circle is always centered on the sigma axis. It's never up here or down here. It's always centered here. So tau max and tau min have the same absolute value. Sigma max and sigma min, which are referred to as the principal stresses, do not have the same value. In this case, sigma max and sigma min are both in tension. In this case, sigma max is tension, sigma min is compression, and here, sigma max and sigma min are both in compression. So they're always, uh, they're always centered on the sigma axis, absolutely, okay? So, so realistically, we're understanding that sigma is going to be a constant. Sigma? No. No, 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 but that's a good that's a good point. Sigma it just has the what this really shows you. It took me a while to think about this, but what this circle really shows you is that there's really a physical difference between a negative sigma and a positive sigma. You know, there's a physical meaning to that. Whereas tau, there is a meaning, and it's important to keep it straight, especially when you're adding things together or subtracting things from each other. But the meaning is a directional, um, it's a directional property, not a difference in the meaning between tension and compression. Yep. And so. The tau's are always going to do equal out of each other, correct? Right. So the maximum and min are going to equal each other. All the time, but the sigma's going to always. That's correct. They're way different. Depends on the circle. That's exactly right. So the next part of your handout shows you 
um, the information that can be gained from Moore's circle. Uh, first of all, the plane of maximum normal stress, uh, in other words, sigma max to sigma min, are perpendicular. Why is that? Well, because sigma max to sigma min is 180 degrees on the circle, which is 90 degrees on the stress block, and 90 degrees is perpendicular. Planes of maximum stress are perpendicular, excuse me, planes of maximum shearing stress are also perpendicular. And if you look at it again, now it just means tau max is here, tau min is here. The re angular relationship between them on the circle is 180 degrees. So that's 90 degrees in real life. And then the maximum shearing stress is 45 degrees from the principal stress, meaning sigma max, sigma min to tau max on the circle is 90 degrees. So that means in real life it's 45 degrees, okay? All right, so then the next part, and this is really the cookbook, this is really what I kind of love quite a bit. I love and hate, I have, a, I have an ambivalent relationship with this. Um, this will tell you exactly how to do a Moore's circle. It's so, this, this set of instructions is so good that you can use it like a cookbook or a trained monkey and never really understand what you're doing and construct a very functional Moore's circle. So, the, was that? <laughs> I was just, yes! No, but <laughs> I mean, seriously. So as an instructor, I am ambivalent about this because I really like it because we can get into the guts of doing it really quickly, but it's a little harder for me to assess what you really understand about it, okay? So, but we'll work on that, it'll be okay. Um, we'll do that by looking at the circle a couple of different ways. But here are the rules, and they're just steps. Sigma and tau on the stress block face are all points on the Mer on Moore circle. If you look at this circle, every value of sigma and tau, here, for example, here, for example, here, for example, represent a state of stress at a particular point on a particular rotation. That's how much information this stores. That's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, sigma and tau on a stress block face are a point on Moore's circle. Absolutely. Keeping in mind that two degrees of rotation on the circle equals one degree on the stress block. Uh, sigma in tension is positive. Sigma in compression is negative. Tau that can cause a clockwise rotation is positive. Tau that causes a counterclockwise rotation is negative. Rule three, that is opposite of the sign convention that we have used up to this point. So in other words, to make your stuff look like Mr. Bailey's notes, uh, Wade Bailey is one who built these notes, uh, you have to change your rotation. Otherwise, you, if you want to stay with the same rotation, which agrees with the right hand rule, which I prefer to do, your circles are going to look backward from his and your rotations are going to look backward from him. Does it matter? It does not. It just matters that you're consistent, that you do it one way or the other, okay? Um, theta on the stress block corresponds to two theta on Moore's circle. And, the, and then the rest of it is just this thing. Here are the coordinates of the center of the circle. If you know sigma x and sigma y, you add them together, divide them by two, that's average. And then comma zero. So in other words, this is your sigma component, this is your tau component at the center of the circle. That just says that the circle is always gonna be centered on the sigma axis. The radius of the circle, which also is tau max, is equal to sigma x minus sigma y over two quantity squared plus tau xy squared, all raised to the one half, or in other words, the square root of that quantity. Now one thing you'll notice is this is how, this is how, here's the difference. The direction or the, the value of sigma x and sigma y matter to the location of the center of the circle. They also matter to this quantity. Tau xy is squared and then the square root is taken of it. So what does that mean? It's always gonna be the same sign. So the sign of tau xy, once again, has less physical meaning than sigma x and sigma y. All right, and here is your little cookbook, which we'll go through in just a moment. And um, I will do one for you and we'll go from there. But these are the steps that are your cookbook for drawing more circle and the corresponding stress block. So let's take a look at one. I'm gonna flip over here to the document camera and get a decent pen, maybe. Here we go. All right, so 
Here we have on the camera, it says for the stress block shown here, determine the maximum shear and the principal stresses of Moore's circle. Thank you. Dane is fixing the lines for me. Okay. So here we go. We have a sigma x, right? And we're told that the value of sigma x is 8 MPa. All right. Also, you see we're pulling. That's tension, so it's positive, right? Sigma y is also pulling, so it is positive. That has a value of 10 MPa. Now, the first thing they tell you to do, and this is very important, is you have to choose a vertical face. You either choose this or this as the vertical face. I like this vertical face. If you choose this one, it's okay. You then choose a corresponding horizontal face. I like this one. You can choose it otherwise if you wish. But the reason that we do that is we have to decide what's going on here. What is my rotation here? That's a clockwise rotation on my vertical face, isn't it? Okay. So in other words, um, Mr. Bailey considers that to be positive. I would consider it to be negative. I don't care which way you do it as long as you do it the same way every single time. Okay. So we have a clockwise rotation here. That means we have to have a, a counterclockwise rotation here, right? Because otherwise what would happen? It would spin. It would spin. Very good. And my tau xy value then is 6 MPa. All right. So now we're going to build more circle with that. We're going to go back here to step one. Let me flip back over to here. Podium PC. And step one says, find the stress block for the point of interest we just did. Uh, designate one of the faces as vertical and one as horizontal. We did that. Now we're going to draw a sigma tau coordinate system. Remember, not xy, but sigma tau. And now you'll get to see me draw, after I get the center and so forth, you'll get to see me draw Moore's oval or Moore's egg because a circle is kind of out of my range of competency when it comes to drawing freehand. Okay. What's that? Nobody can draw Well, I can't. I know for sure. So this point in the middle is zero, zero, meaning zero, zero tau, zero sigma. That is not the center of the circle, right? The center of the circle is going to be elsewhere. Um, write the coordinates for the vertical face. The vertical face has a sigma of 8 MPa. And a the way I would do it is a negative 6 MPa for tau, because remember my coordinates are not x, y, they're sigma tau. My horizontal face is going to have uh, coordinates of 10, and what's that? The way I would draw it, that's counterclockwise, so positive six, okay? That's just my next step. Oh, quit, I can't do that, I have to come back over here. All right, so um, we've got our sigma and tau points. It says plot the V and H coordinates. I'm going to skip that right now. They will be 180 degrees apart, definitely. Um, but the next thing I'm going to do is step seven, determine the coordinates of the center of the circle using rule number five. We know that there's going to be some sigma coordinate, but that my tau coordinate at the center of the circle is gonna be zero. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is to find the radius, okay? So I'm going to go back and get the formulas for those and calculate those values. Here's my formula for the center of the circle. Sigma x plus sigma y over 2, comma 0. My sigma x is a positive 8. My sigma y is a positive 10 over 2. I'm going to flip over here just a minute. I'm just having you look at the equations for the radius of the circle. I have sigma x, which is 8 minus sigma y, which is 10, divided by 2. That quantity squared, add to that. Tau xy, which is 6 quantity squared, and take the square root of the whole thing. Okay. So I come back over here to the document cam. This is my formula for the center of the circle. This is my formula for the radius of the circle. Okay. 
So the center of the circle is going to be at 8 plus 10, which is 18 divided by 2, or 9 comma 0. My radius is a little bit more complicated, but I have 8 minus 10, which is negative 2, divided by 2, which is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, plus 6 squared, which is 36, raised to the 1 half power. So in other words, I have 37 raised to the 1 half power, which is just over 6, right? Um, and that is actually 6.08, okay? Now the other thing I want to point out, all of my units are in MPA. So this is, the center is at 9 MPA 0, my radius is 6.8 MPA. Right. Now, to draw more circle, that means that my center is going to be at 9, 0. So I'm going to call each of these 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So my center is going to be right here, isn't it? The center is at 9, 0. If my radius is 6.08, that means that um, the smallest principal stress sigma minima is going to be 9 minus 6.08, or in other words, just under 3. This is my sigma 1. My other principal stress is going to be 9 plus 6.08, which is just over 15. That's 10, 12, 14, 16, so it's going to be right in here. That would be sigma 2. This is also the value that is my maximum and minimum shearing stress. So this is going to be just over 6. And down here, just under 6. And if I were a good draftsman, I could take these four points and draw a circle. I could have for all year for the nine. I bet you're good at this. <laughs> and I'm not able to no? It, so. Okay. Thank you for your, I was going to say. I was thinking as I was drawing this, I thought Christian probably could do this in his sleep, you know? Like those army medics that can put IVs in in the dark and so forth. It's like, yeah, there we go. So like I said, this is more as... I just use a string. What's that? I just use a string. A string is better. I don't have a string with me, but I, yes. I try, usually just do the knife uh, pen. Yes. And you just do the little flip. Oopsie. All kinds of tricks. Ta -da. But the engineering. This is why they so, the world. <laughs> this is where we have to. This is like a Disney movie. We have to suspend our belief for. We have to. We have to suspend our disbelief for a little bit and pretend like this is a circle. Okay. But what do we know now? Well, we know that my sigma one value, my sigma min, is nine minus six point zero eight, which is just under three, two point nine two MPA. And it is positive, right? So, I mean, it didn't cross over to this side. So my minimum stress is still um, in tension. My sigma 2 is 9 plus this, 15, whoops, 0 0.08 MPA. And my tau max is the radius itself, 6.08 MPA. All right, now we're going to get into this idea of where is x and where is y. Well, we know that on my vertical face that I have a value of sigma of 8 and a tau value of negative 6. Well, here's sigma of 8. That means that my tau value of negative 6 is right here. That's my vertical face. What about my horizontal face? It's at 10 and 6 right here, my horizontal face. If you draw a line between them, horizontal to vertical in real life, is 90 degrees, so on the circle it's 180 degrees. And now we can find out, let's see if they ask us, but I'll do it either way. I mean, the rules make sense, but it's still kind of hard to envision. It is hard to envision. It certainly is. Okay. It's like, are you sure? Yeah, I know. So we have those values of um, what's going on on the uh, horizontal face and on the vertical face.
All right, and so um, I just was looking at something that he had done a little bit later. It's a little bit squippy. But now the question is, what is the orientation of the principal stress? Because that's really what I'm interested in, isn't it? I want to know where it's biggest. I know that here, it's um, this value is uh, 10 and 6. But we know that I come out here to a value of 15. What is the orientation? Well, what I need to do is to find theta. And you see that from the horizontal face to the axis of principal stress, I have to rotate this way. From the horizontal axis, I have to rotate this way. In other words, um, clockwise. So I start here, and I'm going to rotate clockwise some angle right here. And I want to know what that is, because that's my angle of principal stress. Now the other way I can draw that is, I can draw my um, block at that angle, and I can say my principal stress is at that angle on the block. This is where the geometry just becomes a little odd. But the first thing I need to do is to determine what is this angle. Well, what you see is we have this radius, which we know the length of the radius from the center to the horizontal face, 6.08 MPa. And we can drop down a perpendicular here, and we see that we have a right triangle inscribed in the circle. Since the center of the circle is at 9, and this value on sigma is uh, 10, we know that we have a, this is what my triangle looks like. This is 6.08, this is 1, and this is, um, I guess, 6, isn't it? So this is this right triangle right here. And based on that, can I find that angle theta? Absolutely. Theta, I've got three sides. But theta is going to be, for example, if I take opposite over adjacent, the inverse tangent of 6 over 1. So my theta on my circle is what? This is where I have to find the tangent of 6. All right, let's come over here. Oh, the inverse tangent, sorry. Okay, oh, I'll sure. I just picked up some weird little program here. Okay, so let's see. Inverse tangent of 6 is, I said 6. Why did you do that? There it is. All right. In degrees. I know. That's what happens when you go to just Google, right? What's that? Ad blocker. Yes, I would love to have an ad blocker. I haven't put one on there yet, have I? My solution is just to go back and find something else. What is it? Inverse tangent of 6. 80.53. Thank you. And that looks about right, doesn't it? Yeah. That always bothered me when they, they give you the inverse tangent are tangents and they just kind of throw you off and it's the same thing. Like yes. Why they rename it. Oh, I'll tell you in just a moment. I can tell you this right. Is it 83.3? It was 80.53. 80.53. Okay. Very good. Now, the next part of this is if the angle on the circle is 80.53, it's going to be half that on the block, isn't it? So the tan so we could say this is really equal to 2 theta. So theta here is equal to 40.265 degrees, which we'd want to round off. That's a little severe. But so that means that from the horizontal face to the axis of principal stress, we have to rotate through 2.65, or 40.265 40 degrees, which also means that this angle would be 40.265 degrees if my principal stresses look like this, where on this axis it would be um, 15 point something, on this axis it would be 2.92. Okay, so there's how the geometry looks. So let's talk a little bit. This is what I. This is the end of our material about more circle today, but you now have with this handout. Um,
you have everything you need to draw a very functional Mohr circle. Now, like I said, Mr. Bailey's discussion of what's negative and positive are going to be opposite. The size of the circle and the location of the circle are going to be the same for you. It's just the location of the horizontal and vertical face are going to be off across an axis is what it amounts to. It's like if you, it's a mirror image. There you go. It's going to be a mirror image. All right. So this is the first part, and I will give you a little bit of homework for this. And we're out of time. The reason that it's called an arc tangent or an inverse tangent is because arc comes from the idea of using a unit circle to do trigonometry. So it's actually the arc on a circle. Isn't that great? All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. Um, I don't think I'll give you any homework. Get caught up on everything else. And then we'll have more fun with more circle and combined loads on Monday.